If you wanna know how to generate hot buyer, seller, and luxury leads, this tutorial is going to be for you. I'm going to be breaking down step-by-step, click-by-click, exactly what to do, so that at the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to have your first Google ad up and running and generating you hot leads tomorrow. Now, a few quick things before we get started. Number one, I'm going to be talking to you about the special housing category, similar to the special ad category for Facebook ads, where I'm going to show you how to get around the privacy laws, still be able to target a one mile radius, not a 15 mile radius, and be able to crush it with hot leads. Now, the second thing is, is there's something really cool that you can do to actually see the exact ads that the top agents in your market are running, and not just their ads, but their exact keywords, where they're sending traffic to, and how to actually steal some of their traffic. So if you're interested in knowing the wizard tricks of how to crush it on Google Ads in 2022, drop a comment below and I'll give you my free social media training where I break down in my masterclass how to properly use not just Google Ads, but every single platform, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Google. So if you want to know that training, just drop a comment below because we won't have enough time to get into all of it in this video. So without further ado, let's dive into it and go through this full Google Ads tutorial for Realtors 2022. All right, guys, let's walk through this full step-by-step -step follow along tutorial to show you how to properly run Google ads for real estate agents in 2022. Now you can see here that I've got two screens open to start. I always recommend just, I wanna show you what you need in order to get things rolling. I've got Google because that's where we're gonna go into our Google ads account. And then I've got my KV Core website here with eXp Realty. You need, you know, in order to get ideal results from this, I typically recommend having an IDX website. If you don't, I can talk about that. Um, later in the video when we get to the point where you need a link, but this is what I have. So let's start diving directly into it. So we're going to go ahead and type in Google AdWords. <clears throat> and what we're going to do here is we're going to walk through every single step that we need, but then I'm also going to start with buyers and then I'll also kind of explain the difference that you need to do in order to get seller leads um, as well. So we can go through and start this ad. So as you can see here, when you come to Google, you're uh, brought with your dashboard here. And what we're gonna do is go to new campaign and get this started. Now, again, typically people are uh, a little bit drawn to clicking on things like leads or website traffic or anything else like that. But what we want is to have full control over the campaign. So we're gonna do create campaign without a goals guided. Now, the one thing that I am going to say before we get started, and this is what not many people dive into enough, is we're gonna come up here and go to tools and settings, and we're gonna to come to the keyword planner. And I think this is important because again, you've got a couple of different options here. Um, and what we want to do is we wanna discover keywords because ultimately we are doing pay-per-click. And what that means is that based on the keywords people are typing into Google, they will click on our ads. Well, the only way to do that is to find the right keywords. Now there is a multitude of ways that you can actually find keywords in very strategic ways. I'm just gonna do the in-house one here within Google because this is what you'll have um, just within the same interface. And then again, in my training, um, I kind of go down the rabbit hole and, and show you all kinds of different things. Now there's two different options here start with keywords or start with a website. When you start with a website, for example, if you typed in, you know, even just this website here, my KB Core one, and you look at the entire website, get results, what it's going to do is Google knows what type of website this is. It knows it's a real estate lead generation um, site. So you can see here, you know, all kinds of different things related to eXp Realty, houses for sale, stuff like that. I don't recommend doing that. And most people don't have enough traffic to actually make that worthwhile. So what we're going to do is start with keywords. So for example, let's say we're going to start again with buyers and then talk about sellers. Um, usually with something like homes for sale in Calgary. And maybe you want to either A, do your city, or B, do a community. Because here's the thing that is really important. You need to look at level of competition. As you're starting to run Google Ads, if you're on a smaller budget, I recommend going more niche. So if you're on a smaller budget, and I consider a smaller budget less than $50 a day, then I typically recommend choosing a community or a sub-market. For example, in my city, Calgary, 1.1 million people, 
15, 20 minute drive north is Airdrie, which is a much smaller area. It's a submarket, little town. Same with east of me and south of me. And typically Google Ads will perform better there for smaller budgets because it's way less competitive where the top agents in your market spending tens to thousands of dollars a month are all doing it for homes for sale in your city not in a specific community in most cases. So what we're gonna do here is just look at homes for sale in Calgary um, as if we were doing our whole city because I don't know the, um, the communities in your market, but we will go ahead and look at this. So what we want to do is we want to start exploring some of the different options that we can use for our keywords. And as you're going to see here, you've got things like homes for sale for Calgary, 27,000 uh, searches per month. Now. When we're starting to look at this, it also depends where we want to be looking at this data for, um, because this is for all of Canada. If we wanted to adjust the targeting area to our market, we want to come here and look at Calgary. So now let's see what the searches say. You can see here, 18,000 searches per month, and you can see that in terms of cost per lead, you can expect to pay on the low end 40 cents, high end $1.20, which is not bad. Houses for sale, condos for sale, townhouses for sale. Um, and you can start to look at a number of different things here, just looking at their search volume and also the bid range to make sure it's something that you're comfortable with paying. So my recommendation, and again, we won't do all of that um, here, is to create a Google Sheet or a Word document or an Excel sheet and list out all the different keywords that are related to your market. And then that way you'll be able to get started um, with the right type of thing. And then I'm gonna show you later in this um, how we can kind of use Google stuff to go down the rabbit hole. So what we're gonna do, create a campaign without a goals guidance. We want to do search as the campaign type because we wanna do search ads for people that are searching Google pay-per-click. And then you won't need to worry about these uh, conversion goals. This is more for like, you know, online training or selling or a physical product or a digital product. So now we're gonna come down here and we want website visits. You have phone calls, um, you could do app downloads, but you know typically this doesn't convert as high. So what you want to do is you wanna have a website. So a couple of different options here. Do you, again, if we were doing all of my city, then what I would do is I would just filter this by single family homes in my city and then search. And then people could again, take this link and people could just browse around, right? So if you're doing a specific community, then you would just filter by the community. Um, and then the campaign name, again, maybe we'll just do like Calgary Home Buyers. I always recommend to make it very literal um, because when you're on that dashboard that we came from, it's very important that you're able to just look very quickly at the dashboard and know the campaigns that you're looking at, look at the data, look at the performance and be able to adjust if necessary. Um, and then we'll click continue. We're gonna start a new ad. So now we're on this next part. So what we've got here is our set to your average daily budget. And I'm gonna talk about something here that's very important that most people don't talk about um, and is gonna help you hopefully ease your mind a little bit. So the reason why it's saying average daily budget, when you look at something like Facebook ads, for example, if you put $20 a day and you know $20 a day times seven days a week is $140 a week, Facebook more or less is gonna spend almost exactly $20 a day. Now with Google and YouTube ads, the approach is a little bit different in how they interact. So for example, if you do $20 a day, $140 a week on Google ads, some days it might spend $41, other days might spend $7, one day might do 33 and then 21 and then six. And what happens is based on the algorithm and the performance of your ads, it is going to spend more on the days where the performance is higher, less on the days where the performance and conversion is lower, but at the end of the week, you will not have spent more than the total of 140. So I see some people that spend $20 a day or put $20 a day here, and then they get a bill or they just see in their analytics that they spent $43 yesterday and they get you know a little bit scared because maybe they can only afford $20 a day. Well, by the end of the week, it will all equal out every single time. What we want to do here is in most cases, you're probably going to use clicks for cost per click. Um, and then what we can do is we've got more settings down here. You don't need to worry too much about this. And in terms of the maximum settings, I always like to maximize for clicks. So this is typically what I like to use um, for Google Ads when we're just getting started. And now we're gonna come to the next set. So you've got the search network and the display network. 
I typically find that the conversion on the search network is much higher. So I would just leave it as a search network. And then now we've got our location. So when we come to the location options, you can again, target people that are interested or present in this area people that are present only or people with search interests. So if you want to target relocation buyers, then you would want to do just search interests, right? People searching for your location. If you want to do relocation and local, you would do this. If you want to just target people that actually live there already, then you would want to do that, um, which is presence. And now we're going to go ahead and enter the location. Now there's a couple things we can do. I like to do advanced search here. Um, and my recommendation is you can see a couple differences. Let's say we type in my city. What's going to happen here is you'll see that it's going to just do a complete geographical outline of the city perimeters. Um, and that's going to, you know, just encompass the um, land mass of your city. However, if you want to have more control, you can come over here and type in Calgary or your city, for example. Um, and what's going to happen is you can adjust this radius as much as you want. So you could come down here to a five mile radius if you would like. You could go down to a one mile radius, but it gives you a lot more control. Um, if you want to niche down, for example, for sellers, if you want to farm an area, what you would do is type in something like this. You could go mahogany in Calgary. And then you could do a technically a one mile radius. And now it encompasses the entire community. Right, so really cool opportunities there. Um, but for this general one, we will just do my entire city. And we will go ahead and start with that. So now we're going to come down here and languages, I typically leave it to English unless of course you are specializing in a different demographic, then you can feel free to adjust that. We've got audience segments. Now what audience segments are is it allows you to target in market audiences, which is super powerful. So you can do as you can see try houses for sale. And what it's going to do is give you all of the ones related to houses for sale. So for anybody looking again, you can see here people interested in purchasing or um, a house or a townhouse right now people interested in purchasing a new house, new development, new construction, um, real estate, residential for sale, apartments for sale, residential properties, new apartments for sale. Um, typically, you'd want to leave out rent. So dynamic ads, don't worry about this. Um, and then more settings, very important, start and end date. So typically, you always want to select an end date, because sometimes your ads not going to perform as you're expecting. And if you don't set an end date, it's going to continue to just burn money for no reason. Um, and then typically what I, I do is do all day and then URL options. You don't have to worry about it. So now what we're going to do is again, you can see all of the recommended keywords here that are associated with the website, right? Which is all of these ones. This will pre-populate based on the website link that you put in. Um, so it's going to give you a pretty good start. However, my recommendation is to do that keyword research that we talked about in the beginning and actually find the exact ones based on the cost per click and the search volume that are going to do the best. Now, the one important thing, and again, I break this down in much more detail in my training, is you've got four, not three as it shows here, four different types of keywords. And I highly recommend you kind of dive into these um, and explore a little bit more. As you can see, when you click learn more, you've got... Um, a couple different things. And the reason why I say four is because there's negative keywords is so for example, broad match, as you can see here, these are all broad match keywords. And that is just simply typing in the keyword with no parentheses. Now what that means is let's say you typed in homes with no parentheses, then unfortunately, broad match means that it's going to capture anything that has homes in the search could be pet homes, could be dog homes, could be nursing homes, could be anything with homes, right? Well, that's not what we want. That's going to be a lot of wasted budget. Um, and it's going to be getting traffic and spending on clicks that aren't what we're looking for. Now, if you do phrase match, then what that's going to do is if you typed in like Calgary homes, and you did it in the parentheses like this, then what it's going to do in terms of the phrase match, you can come down here and look at the definition is it's going to be, you know, ads uh, may show on searches that include the meaning of your word. So you can always see little uh, graphics down here that are going to have a good representation of it. But for example, this would show up for something like, you know, Calgary homes for sale. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to include this keyword, but it'll also add in some variations based on what shows up before and what shows up after. Now, exact matches are when you use the brackets. And what this means is that they have to type in exactly what's within these brackets in order for your ad to show up. So in the beginning, if you're just getting started, I recommend using some, if you do the proper keyword research I showed you by going to the keyword planner, I typically recommend doing some phrase matches and adding a bit of specificity to it and niching down a little bit. And then as you start to look at the performance, you can start to do exact matches. Now negative matches are, or negative keywords are very powerful. So what these are is it gets rid of basically searches that are not going to be relevant based on this. So let's say we wanted to type in, you know, Calgary homes, homes for sale. And we wanted to include this as a broad match, but then for a negative keyword, we just wanted to do the negative. And then what we did is we wanted to remove pets and we wanted to remove um, dogs. Basically what it does is it, if you type in any negative keywords, if that negative keyword shows up, you won't have to pay for it, right? Nobody's gonna, your ad won't show up. So it's a good way to filter out any of the outliers and any of the things that might show up just based on the nature of the keywords that you did. So it gives you a lot more control. I spend a lot of time identifying negative keywords when I'm running Google ads, uh, because this is going to make sure that you're not wasting a single dime on keywords that are not relevant. Um, so typically, again, if we're doing Calgary homes for sale, you know, this is uh, within reason, you know, uh, relatively decent, but again, all the right keywords would be in the keyword planner. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna come down here and we're going to actually create the ad. So you've got here, you know, you can see view ideas and it's gonna give you a number of different ideas for each of these um, if you so choose to do so. Now here's a cool thing is you've got your display path. And what this does is this is what's gonna show up to the, uh, the viewer, but it's not going to impact the actual URL. So if you wanted to do something like Calgary and then homes, for sale. So now what happens is when people actually see your ad, the URL is going to say, you know, mikechar.exp.com slash Calgary slash homes for sale. So just from an optics perspective, it's going to make people think, okay, this is a specific link about exactly what I'm looking for, right? Or if you use a community name or whatever you want to do, um, it just kind of visually helps increase your conversion. So now what you've got is you've got a couple different things here. You can see here, you've got headlines and you need to enter at least three headlines. And then you've got your descriptions and you have to enter at least two descriptions. And then your ad's going to preview over here. So let's say we wanted to, again, explore different headlines. What I would typically do is type in something like Calgary homes for sale and look at what are the top ranking ads that are being done in my market by other agents. Well, Calgary's number one MLS search, search all Calgary homes for sale, see all listings, see all listings. So typically you can see here that basically everybody wants to see all the listings, right? So um, if we were to kind of recreate one of these, um, but usually, or you always want to put your own spin on it, um, you could do most popular Calgary homes and then you could do something like view all listings updated in real time. And then you've got three. Now, um, again, in my program, so I actually give you all of this. Uh, but let's go down to the description. So you've got a couple different descriptions. So the description is going to be this part, right? Which is right here. You've got your headline. And then you've got your description. And again, to show you about that extension, this would be slash search slash Calgary, right? Slash Calgary slash AB. Um, so you can see here, typically people are saying live MLS feed updated, find the home updated every 15 minutes. Clearly people like that is updated. Um, so that's going to be an importance or a priority. So you can see um, view the most popular listings for sale right now in Calgary updated in real time every 
15 minutes or however often your website um, kind of updates and then you'll be able to see um, then typically you want to kind of just again look at you know a couple different things that could be um, included here now I'm going to show you one kind of ninja trick that's really powerful um, after I kind of do this so browse all homes for sale blah 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 um, so get instant access with no uh, sign up or something like that. So one of the things that's really important, and we'll show it to you here. If you look, and if you look right here, home for sale, I typed in Calgary homes for sale. When you look at this, why are these words bold? Well, that's because when a keyword is typed in and it's an exact match within the description, it shows up as bold, which is really powerful because it stands out. So when you're looking at writing your description, think about how you can include keywords that people would be searching for. And that's why the keyword planner is so important because you could start to get an idea of what people would be searching for and then have more bold words included in there as well. So that's typically um, where we're going to kind of start with things. And that's going to give you, you know, more or less a general idea of where we can get started with the ad and all of the different headlines and all that good stuff. So now what we do is click next. And we've got a couple things. You could get six more clicks at the same budget if you created the site link extension. Let's see if anybody has. Okay, here we go. You can see these people here have site link extensions. So you could go directly to Calgary condos, you could go to Calgary detached, or you could go to Calgary luxury. So what this does is understand the principle that convenience sells. The more convenient you make it for the end user, the more clicks you're going to get. So let's say I was looking to buy a house in Calgary or maybe a condo and I searched, you know, Calgary homes for sale and then I see condos. Well, I'm going to be more inclined to click on this than to go to this one and then try and do all the filters and figure it out myself. Well, if I'm into luxury, then I could click on this. So it makes it easier for the viewer and for the audience to do it. And so what I used to do, as you can see here on multiple uh, different things, is I would do, you know, 250K, 250 to 250 to 5K. Um, and then I did, I think, 5 to 750. And then I did 750 or more. Um, so you can do, you know, that many. And then I would typically do like, all listings, right? So now what this can do, you can either break it out by price point or you could see here by feature. So if there's popular features like corner lots or you could see, you know, finished basements, mountain views, or again, condos, townhouses, detached, luxury, acreage. Think about what your market uh, views as in demand. And you can look at here at how these are going to show up, right? On mobile, on desktop, and on YouTube mobile. So when you look at this, if you want to add a new site link extension, or if you want to change any of these, you just again, come down here and go to new site link extension, you would just type in the name of it. And you don't need to do a description. Um, I don't, and you just add them in, and then save. It's very easy. And then for the URL options, um, again, each of these, you would just put the URL in here. So if I was to do, you know, Calgary, and I wanted to filter by, let's say, you know, under $250,000, like I did with that first one, then what I would do is I'll just come here, max 250. And then I would just take this link. And I would just paste it directly in here. And I would say under 250k, right. Um, so that's how you do the site link extensions. This is a very important thing. Um, and you can see here, we're going to get an average cost per click about 25 cents with $20 a day with um, potentially 79 clicks a day, uh, which is super cool. Now call out extensions, you can add five more call out extensions. Let's look at what these look like. Um, if we search, you know, call now, and then we want to say book appointment um, is the two that I actually frequently used. Um, if we preview this, you can see where this shows right? It's kind of like the little text on the side, which is like your phone number, right? If you wanted to add that or anything else. Um, so I like to continue to add everything possible. Uh, just because again, never hurts. And then for the call extensions, add your number. Um, please don't text me. Um, so you can see here, call and people can just click and directly add your number. Um, and then you've got more extensions, but you don't have to worry about any of these because these are more for um, like e commerce and products and things like that. And now you go next and look at this. 
we're done. You get to basically review it, look at everything that you've chosen, um, see if you want to kind of make any adjustments, and then all you do is click publish campaign, and away you go. Um, and my recommendation is as you're doing this, um, to go through and make sure that after three days, not after one, after three days, go back to your campaign um, and and start to look at the data, right? Look at your campaigns, look at how they're performing, study the data, because the only way that you're gonna improve is if you actually study the data in terms of looking at the cost per view, the cost per meal, which is cost per thousand, looking at the average cost, looking at your conversion rate, looking at your cost per click. So it's really important that as you're going through this effort to, again, give it a shot and then start to make adjustments over time so that you can improve because there's never going to be a one size fits all perfect ad for every market for every demographic every time um, this is going to be a great way to start again the keyword tools planner is going to put you on great path i also use tools like the google keyword planner um, keywords everywhere as well as sem rush is a really ninja one sem rush is actually um, the strategy that i share in my training where it shows you the exact ads that the top agents in your market are running and the keywords they are using um, and the direct landing pages and everything. So it's pretty cool. But this is gonna get you started on the right path. If you have any other questions about running Google ads for realtors in 2022, drop a comment below. I will answer every single question as I always do. Um, and again, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next time.